Apparently there's been some misunderstanding about how to use Kelly's taper program. Basically all you do is you create one taper to the final sizes that you want and you're done. From that point on you can take an oversized blank, throw it in and tell it what you want the tip diameter cut to, create the new G-code and run it. You don't have to modify the taper at all. All you do is change that tip size. Uh, I'm going to create a taper here just to show you what's involved and then I will take a cut on a shaft that's been roughed in. We'll see how it goes. Well first let me say this. My spinning station is G58. That's our active work offset. When I'm at that location, X0 and Y0, my cutter is set up on the center line of my spinner at the back shoulder of my shaft. Be along that center line and that back shoulder. That's X, Y, 0. It's always going to be X, Y, 0. And that's one of the nice things about this program. I can rely on that. I'll start Kelly's program. And I will go to shafts. Let's create a new taper. Add a taper. I spell out what my joint diameter should be, in this case 840. Since my taper varies 15 thousandths per inch, approximately, it's going to be uh, 45 thousandths smaller, 3 inches away from the joint face. And this taper is designed to be used with a shaft that will finish at 13 millimeters. Let's just go with a, a middle ground taper that Kelly designed. I'm not saying it's the best taper. It's a, actually a pretty good taper. But for the purposes of this demonstration, that's what we'll go with. So we'll say, create that taper. And this is what it spits out. It's called the new taper. That's the joint size, the three inch collet size, and the default tip size. Now I can tweak things anywhere in here to change that taper. If I want to change the the 14 point or 14 inch mark from 552, let's make it 600 just to exaggerate it. And it creates a spike there that's 600 diameter. Well, that's not good. Let's change it back to 552. That looks better. Okay, I like that taper. Let's save it for a new name. Well, it, we'll just call it New Taper. Save. Okay, this shows us that we have changed something there because it's highlighted in red. To fully save this taper and its configuration, we have to go up to File, Save Defaults and Taper Data. They have now been saved. Now to generate a program, all I have to do is enter in the sizes that I want for this particular shaft. The shaft that I'm going to be cutting was last cut about five years ago. It was 600 diameter at the tip at that time. I have no idea what taper I had on it at that time. It doesn't matter. We're going to change it. We'll cut that first taper to 575. And that's it. That's all we have to do to create a taper now. I'll boost the feed rate to 25. Go down here. Create G-code. There it is. I load it in. Boom.
now let's say I want to change that from 875 to 850. This is all I have to do. but that's pretty good. Okay, let's say six months have gone by. I'm gonna take this from 550 down to 530. I just, it's been stored away, out of sight for six months. Now I bring it back, throw it in. I can change this a different taper, I can run any other jobs, but say I want to run this one job again and take 20 thousandths off this shaft. All I have to do is call up this taper, the new taper, enter the new size up here, five, uh, 530, I'll close that out. I changed the feed rate to speed it up a little bit more. I raised it up to 30 inches per minute. So I'll create a new G code again. I changed the feed rate. I'm done. Load the G code. And there we are, our 530 dimension. Every time I took a cut on this shaft, the only thing I had to change was the tip diameter in Q cut. Everything else had already been established as the new taper, and everything is, is right there. This is about 20 thousandths oversized at this end. This end here is supposed to be finish at 8.40, it should be about 8.60 right now. And that's what we have. I don't know if you can, I don't know if you can see that there. I have 20 thousandths of stock all over this whole thing. And the real beauty of this program is that when I go to XY0, my cutter will be 
on the center line of this axis and even with the back face of the shaft. I don't have to change that. I can throw a butt in here and cut the taper on a butt using the same G58 fixture offset that I use for this fixture's location. I don't have to pick up center every time. It's there. The whole point of this though is just to let you know once your parameters are set for a taper, the only adjustment you have to make would be diameter or possibly the length. Other than that, everything else is built into the program. That's the beauty of it.